Hey, is anybody else getting really tired of this Lord Paxton guy? Oh, heck yeah! Villains suck! I'm so ready to stab him in the eye! Ah, uh, but we don't even know what he is! He might not have eyes. <laughs> Whatever. I'll stab him somewhere, that's for sure. Yes, he is a real pain. It's almost like he was intentionally created to make our lives difficult. Welcome to DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart and I've been a Dungeon Master since high school. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can implement at your game table. Today, we're gonna look at creating awesome, memorable villains for our D&D campaigns. And stay tuned to the end of the video for a special DM bonus tip. First of all, if you're looking for how to create a stat block for a big bad evil guy, then you're in the wrong video. Though I do intend to do a video like that sometime in the future. Instead, we're going to focus on how to create an awesome, memorable villain for your campaign that your players will never forget. To do this, we're going to look at the different kinds of villains that you might use and characteristics that make up a good villain. Because an awesome villain is much more than a stat block. The vengeful villain. This is the person who seeks revenge for some horrible deed that was committed against them. The revenge is often quite horrible and deviously plotted out. The Count of Monte Cristo is an excellent example of this. Now, he is considered the protagonist of the book. However, he is going to great lengths to get revenge on Fernand Mondego and others that had him committed to the Chateau d'If. If you're looking for a vengeful villain to introduce into your campaign, I suggest you take a peek at your player's backstories. Find someone in the PC's backstory that would make a good, vengeful villain for your game and then work him into the storyline. You can use such villains either in the main campaign arc or in a separate character arc. You can take a look at my campaign creation part one video for more information on campaign arcs and character arcs. The Mastermind. This villain has a long-term scheme with many moving pieces and plots. He often uses henchmen and intermediaries to accomplish his goals. And he is the person behind it all. A mastermind uses Xanatos Gambit thinking, where all paths and outcomes lead to his victory. And when running a mastermind, Mastermind villain, what you can do is use your time outside of the game, away from the table, to constantly adjust his plans so that all paths constantly keep him marching toward victory. You want to paint the story that no matter how many victories your players rack up against the villain, it still appears that the villain is going to have ultimate success. You want to create tension, drama, and a sense of urgency. Just remember that your goal is not to beat your players. Any novice dungeon master can beat his players. Your goal is to make things fun and interesting for them and to challenge them. Now, Lord Paxton from my Sword Coast Guard campaign is an example of a mastermind villain. His goal is to establish an empire all along the Sword Coast, and he has various plans and methods that inexorably march him closer and closer to that end. He is slowly but surely pulling in monstrous creatures such as orcs and giants as his vassals, promising them rewards in return for following him. He is even extending that offer to goodly aligned creatures in the region, and many of them are accepting. Now, Lord Paxton uses his vassals and his minions to accomplish his goals instead of exposing himself. An ancient white dragon, Vraskin Delver, and a warlock, Sebastian Venetia, are his primary emissaries to the region. In fact, these emissaries visited the player's characters in my campaign and made them an offer to join him as vassals. Wanton death and destruction are not Lord Paxton's goals. He only resorts to that when absolutely necessary. He would much rather the local communities join him willingly. And every time the heroes deal a defeat to Lord Paxton, he finds a way to shift it to his advantage. And my players have no idea that this is indeed what is happening. Although I guess if they're watching this video, they do now. The Femme or Ham Fatale. This is a villain that uses seduction, charm, and manipulation to accomplish their goals. This villain looks to deceive or manipulate others into doing his bidding, often using his attractiveness to those ends. Now, using this type of villain in your campaign does not mean that your game needs to cross into the X-rated category. You can simply play this villain as using his good looks and charm 
to manipulate others into accomplishing his ends. A charismatic bard as a villain might very well fit this bill. Lady Nellaby Tharmer from my Sword Coast Guard campaign is a great example of a femme fatale. Now, she originally met the group, especially Nigel, on the way to Waterdeep and asked them to escort her to the city. You see, there were bandits on the road. And Nigel, being the kind-hearted sort of person that he was, simply could not refuse. And back in Waterdeep, they both developed a friendship that blossomed into something much more. And Nigel, the kind-hearted bard, was infatuated with Lady Tharmer, as he was infatuated with almost every other beautiful woman that he saw. Now, the adventuring party continued to do their thing in the campaign, fighting bad guys, saving the world, and every time they were back in Waterdeep for some downtime, Nigel would go visit his love, Lady Tharmer. And after some time of this, the party was invited to Lady Tharmer's manch, where her true nature was revealed, a vile succubus from the endless layers of the abyss. And it was also revealed that Nigel was a father, a father to a veritable horde of Cambian children. And despite the Sword Coast Guard's valiant efforts, they were unable to apprehend the succubus, who escaped back to the abyss with her Cambian children. To this day, Lady Nellaby Tharmer is out there somewhere, and my players might just run into her, her and her Cambian army. The murderer. Manipulation, deceit, and meticulous planning are not the murderer's forte. Instead, his methods are fairly straightforward. Brutality, death, and destruction. When using this sort of villain, feel free to embrace those characteristics. A demon and his minions cutting a swath of desolation before them totally fits the bill here. You gotta embrace the destruction. Now, my Manus Invictus group once faced a Beholder Overlord, his Beholder Kin, and an army of Slotty. A meteorite crashed off the coast of Waterdeep, causing a tidal wave that slammed into the city, destroyed much of it, and caused complete chaos and disarray. On the back of this natural disaster, Slotty secretly and overtly entered the city. Some of them were just slaughtering the populace, but most of them were secretly planting their eggs into people. And as the eggs matured and erupted into slotty tadpoles, chaos overtook the city. At this point, the slotty descended upon the city in force, slaughtering and infecting those they could. There was no larger plan beyond slaughtering the populace and creating more slotty. And the heroes of Manus Invictus naturally traveled to the meteorite to put an end to this threat. They battled through levels of slotty and beholder kin, to finally confront this Beholder Overlord. And now that we've discussed some of the main types of villains, we're gonna look at some of the characteristics that make up an awesome villain. But first, a word from my sponsors. This video is sponsored by our wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Yes, every month our patrons help choose a video topic for this channel. And this month, they chose villain. That's right! Everyone loves a good villain! They're perfect for stabbing! And this month, we'd like to give a huge thank you to Ink Thinks. He's one of our newest patrons. Yeah, Ink Thinks is really cool. Thanks a lot, dude, for being our patron. If you want to learn more about becoming a patron, there's a link down in the description. Characteristics of an awesome villain. Number one, the villain needs to have a goal or objective that will create conflict in the world. This is the villain's motivation. It is why he does what he does. Now, a villain often sees the world in a skewed way, and his goals may not make sense to someone else. For instance, Lord Paxton wanted to create an empire along the Sword Coast, even if it meant crushing some of the civilizations that stood in his way, so that he could usher in a new age of peace and prosperity. Number two, a villain has the power to enact change and is motivated to do so. A villain without any power is just a worm that the player characters will brush aside. A villain needs to have some bite. Now, Lord Paxton is powerful in his own right, having defeated an ancient white dragon in single-handed combat, but he also commands armies of orcs and giants. And Lord Paxton is quite willing to crush under his heel anyone who opposes him and refuses to become a sworn vassal. 
Number three, give your villains personality traits and flaws just as your players give their PCs. Flesh that villain out and make him feel real to your players. Practice a distinctive voice for your villain to use and practice also mannerisms and facial expressions for that villain. Now my players have never met Lord Paxton. However, they have interacted with his minions countless times and even met his emissaries, the dragon Vraskin Delver and Sebastian Venetia. They've even received letters from Lord Paxton. So I imagine by now, even though they haven't met him, that Lord Paxton is quite real to them. Number four, consider having a distinctive physical characteristic that distinguishes the villain from others. Consider things like eye patches or scars or fanciful armor. These are the things that give flavor to your villain. Let's take for instance Lord Paxton. Actually, no one, no one, no one has ever seen Lord Paxton. So who knows what he looks like? Number five, I recommend you check out chapter four of the Dungeon Master Guide for information on designing NPCs because a villain is really just an NPC in your game. And there's also a section there specifically for villains that has a lot of good information about a villain's schemes and methods. There is also a book from previous editions called The Complete Book of Villains. You might check that out. I will put a link down in the description for you. All right, and now it's time for the DM bonus tip. After you have created an awesome villain for your game, I have an idea that I know exactly what you're going to be tempted to do. You may want to reveal the villain to your players early on as a sort of tease, and then have some odd expectation that they won't want to fight that villain right then and there. Because believe me, they probably will. So I suggest resisting the urge to reveal your villain early on in your campaign. Instead, consider keeping your villain a mystery and slowly revealing more and more about them throughout the campaign. Not only does this create suspense and anticipation for your players, but it gives you, the Dungeon Master, the freedom to adjust things behind the screen as the campaign unfolds. For instance, what if your campaign that was originally designed to end at level eight looks like it's gonna make it to level 15? Well, if you haven't revealed to your players what or who exactly your villain is, well, then you can make adjustments behind the screen. Instead of being a CR8 giant, maybe it's a CR15 or 18 demon. Take Lord Paxton, for instance. Do you think that he's the same villain now as when my campaign originally began? Let us know about an awesome villain that you created or ran into in a campaign. And if you wanna learn how to create awesome NPC dialogue on the fly, check out this video right here. And until next time, stab the villain in the eye! <laughs>